Psalm 118, 24. This is the day that the Lord, <coughs> the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad today. Good morning, church. Today is Wednesday, September the 30th, 2020. And the time is 1048 a.m. Nahum 1, 7 reminds us that the Lord is good, giving protection in times of trouble. He knows who trusts in him. And Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says, Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for what he has done. Then you'll experience God's peace that exceeds anything that you can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful day. I know we can expect rain but we can also expect you to be here as well. And it's because you are here and it's because you live that we know that we've got this. We've got this day and we've got it in your name. I pray, Lord, that you be with each and every one of us. Keep us all strong. Keep us all healthy. And I pray, Lord, for the people who have had to go for testing, children who have had to go for testing, that the test results will come back negative, that it's just a colds or uh, in some cases asthma, some of the standard maladies that they get, that it's uh, everything isn't COVID, that there are just the regular uh, frustrations of health at this time of year. We ask, Lord, that you be with all of the parents that uh, have had to suffer through this as well, because it. Um, it's not just the interruption in their daily lives, it's the concern, the fear. We pray that you give a peace in their spirits, ease their concern, ease their worries. Let them know that you are in control. Help us all to realize that <laughs> you are in control of all things. We give you all praise, glory, and honor, Lord, today and every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Luke 10, 27. This is one to remember because we deal with people every day and we have God that deals with us. So we, we need to uh, seriously consider this verse. It says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. You stop and think about uh, some of the things that we do that uh, are concerning to the Lord. Then maybe we'll consider our neighbor consider our fellow man, other people, and uh, how they affect us. The weather today, it's 11 degrees out. It's supposed to go up to a high of 15. And there's a risk of thunderstorms this morning and uh, remaining cloudy with few showers this afternoon. That's a 60% chance. The uh, temperature for tonight is to go down to 10, and it'll be partly cloudy and again, a risk of thunderstorms again and partly cloudy and that's at a 60 percent rate right now as well proverbs 3 5 and 6 says trust in the lord with all your heart do not depend on your own understanding seek his will in all that you do and he'll show you which path to take and he'll help you follow the covid protocols as well lambton shores we have had no change again and that is wonderful we're one of the uh, few in Ontario. I believe it said there is 12 public health uh, areas that had zero increase. So the confirmed cases in Sarnia Lambton is 346. As I said, that's zero change, and there's 25 deaths, 318 recovered, leaving three active cases across the territory. Ontario report uh, confirmed cases 51,710. That's up 625. The deaths are up to 2,848. Confirmed cases recovered 43,907. The number hospitalized is also increased. It's up to 150. ICU is up. It's up to 35. And those on the ventilator is also up, and it's at 17. Active cases across Ontario are up to 4,955. Now the Ontario government today released an update on the COVID-19 modeling. 
which shows the province is experiencing a second surge in cases similar to what our juris jur other jurisdictions have experienced. The province is providing the public with full transparency about the consequences if Ontarians are not vigilant in adhering to public health measures. The Chief Medical Officer of Health says Ontarians must be vigilant in adhering to the public health measures to reduce the number of new cases and the spread of the virus. Now, these are the worst case scenarios if we don't follow protocol. The key highlights from the modeling update include Ontario is currently in an upward trajectory similar to its peer jurisdictions, including Victoria, Australia, and Michigan in the United States have experienced. Cases are currently doubling approximately every 10 to 12 days. The growth in cases was initially in the 20 to 39 age group, but now cases are climbing in all age groups. In order to reduce the, num the spread in the number of new cases, it remains critical that Ontarians continue to adhere to public health measures including avoiding large gatherings, physical distancing, and wearing a face covering. So to get this under control, it's up to each and every one of us. And yes, you can go get the test. And yes, the, um, the rapid test will be available at some point. And yes, the vaccine will be available at some point too. But today, we need to uh, follow the rules. You want your kids to follow the rules? Well, we as parents, grandparents, great parents need to follow the rules too. The Canada report confirmed cases across Canada 156,961. That is 1,660 new cases. Deaths is at 9291, and that's just from the um, effects of COVID. Recovered 133,737. Active cases across Canada is 13,933. Today, uh, Rick Rickford, Minister of Indigenous Affairs, issued the following statement on Orange Shirt Day. Today, we acknowledge the long-lasting, multi-generational impact of the residential school system on Indigenous communities our province and our country. For more than a hundred years, indigenous children across Canada were removed from their families and forced to attend residential schools where they were stripped of their language and culture. Orange Shirt Day was inspired by Phyllis Jack Webstad, who in 1973, at the age of six, attended her first day of school in Williams Lake, BC, proudly wearing a brand new orange shirt gifted to her by her grandmother. Upon arriving at school, Phyllis's new shirt was taken from her and she never saw it again. Phyllis has, un has courageously spoken about the devastating impact this and many, many other abuses she suffered had on, had on her dignity and self-worth and how it made her feel as if she simply did not matter. As we move forward together in the path of reconciliation, I urge everyone to honor survivors and their families who have bravely shared their experiences and to commit to learning more about the legacy of the residential school system in Canada. So mark it on your calendar, September the 30th, every year is Orange Shirt Day. And remember what it's all about. If you don't remember it, we're doomed to repeat crimes like that, devastation to societies like that. Open your eyes, open your hearts. The USA report for today confirmed cases 74 or 7,406,146. That's 44,227 new cases. Deaths are up to 210,785. There are 2,456,678 active cases across the U.S. The uh, world numbers, it's up 287,906. And there are 7,681,999 active cases across the world. With being in the uh, second wave, 
those number of active cases is going to go up. Now, some countries had gone into the second wave before Canada did, but the numbers are climbing and climbing too quickly for sure. Our scripture today is from Genesis chapter 4. We're going to finish off the chapter starting at verse 10. Then the Lord said, What have you done? Your brother's blood is crying out to me from the ground. And now you will be cursed in your work with the ground, the same ground which your brother's blood fell and where your hands killed him. You will work the ground, but it will not grow good crops for you anymore, and you will wander around on the earth. Then Cain said to the Lord, This punishment is more than I can stand. Today you have forced me to stop working the ground, and now I must hide from you. I must wander around the earth, and anyone who meets me can kill me. The Lord said to Cain, No, if anyone kills you, I'll punish that person seven times more. Then the Lord put a mark on Cain, warning anyone who met him not to kill him. So Cain went away from the Lord and lived in the land of Nod, east of Eden. He had relations with his wife, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Enoch. At that time, Cain was building a city which was named after his son Enoch. Enoch had a son named Erad. Erad had a son named Mahujael. Mahujael had a son named Methu Methushel. Methushel had a son named Lamech. Lamech married two women, Ada and Zillah. Ada gave birth to Jabal and became the first person to live in tents and raise cattle. Jabal, Jabal's brother, was Jubal, the first person to play the harp and flute. Zillah gave birth to Tubal-Khan, who made tools out of bronze and iron. The sister of Tubal-Khan was Nehemiah. Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zillah, Hear my voice, you wives of Lamech, listen to what I say. I killed a man for wounding me, a young man for hitting me. If Cain's killer is punished seven times, then Lamech's killer will be punished seventy-seven times. Adam had relations with his wife Eve again, and she gave birth to a son. She named him Seth, and said, God has given me another child. He will take the place of Abel, who was killed by Cain. Seth also had a son, and they named him Enosh. At that time, people began to pray to the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your word. It's important to pray to God, to let him know what's going on in your heart, in your life. He already knows. He just wants you to be faithful and talk to him. You talk to your parents. He's our Heavenly Father. We need to stay in communication with him willingly and with our heart. First Timothy 2, verses 1 to 6, says, I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people. Ask God to help them. Intercede on their behalf. Give thanks for them. Pray this way for kings and all in authority, so that we can live peaceful and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. This is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants everyone to be saved and to understand the truth. For there is one God, one mediator, who can reconcile God and humanity, the man Christ Jesus. He gave his life to purchase freedom for everyone. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that we can call on you at all times. doesn't matter who we are or where we are. You're always there with us. I ask, Lord, that you be with our leaders at this time those in authority, those who have to make decisions on what needs to be done during this uh, resurgence of the COVID-19. I pray, Lord, that you envelop them with protection for their health. We hold them up to you, Lord, and ask that they remain strong and that their minds remain nimble and active and I ask, Lord, that their advisors are also uh, held up and that you work through them, Lord, because it's their advice that goes to the, the mayor or the uh, prime minister, the premier, presidents, all of the ones that are in charge. They take the advice from their advisors. They don't make the full decision on their own. 
it's got to be discussed and then they're the ones that uh, are out there to tell the people what needs to be done and I'm sure that this has been going on for so long now that it's wearing them down we just ask that you continue to keep them strong and continue to keep them focused on what their goal is and I pray Lord that they talk to you every day as well several times a day we're told to pray without ceasing so that means that we need to keep you in our hearts and in our minds at all times. Lord, I ask that you're with each and every one of us. We lift up the school teachers to you, Lord. This is a difficult time for them because kids are getting colds and, and other various things. And the first thing that pops to their minds is that it's the virus. Well, every year kids get colds and every year get kids have different ailments that just come with getting back to school. We pray, Lord, that there is some wisdom that uh, steps in here, as well as caution. Be with us all, Lord. We turn this all over to you, because we can't do it. We need you, and you are the great physician. We ask that you touch each and every one of us and keep, keep us healthy and strong. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Ephesians 4.3 says, You are joined together with peace through the Spirit. So make every effort to continue together in this way. Continue to be in God's word. Trust it. And you have to read it before you can even uh, trust it. So start reading it. Start listening to it. Isaiah 41.10 says, Don't worry, because I am with you. Don't be afraid, because I am your God. I will make you strong, and I will help you. I will support you with my right hand that saves you. You know you're going to hear that often enough that you're going to remember it in your sleep. Continue to hold each other up in prayer. Pray for our leaders. Pray for them every day. Pray for those who aren't well. Pray for the parents of the children that are in school. Or actually, not just in school. There's other activities. They can be Hockey is starting for kids. And the other activities are starting for the kids. And kids are getting sick. We need to hold them all up. We need a hedge of protection around each of them. Treat everybody with love, with respect, with compassion and understanding. And whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. That's 1 Corinthians 10, 31. And remember, you can't do it on your own strengths. You need the power of the Lord. So you need the Holy Spirit in you, working through you. God bless each and every one of you. And may God be with you until we meet again.